Nee. Yes. This talk will rely on the speaker's expertise as a military expert, demonstrating how high-tech weaponry is defeating the world's second most powerful army. This talk will include advanced weapons technology that are game changers on the battlefield. Welcome Jay Tuck, bestseller author and global speaker at Jay Tuck. Once again, put your hands together for Mr. J. Tuck. So now we do a test, test, test. I think I'm on the loudspeakers. This is good. Hello, I'm Jay Tuck. I come from New York City. I'm a specialist in military technology. I will be talking to you for 20 minutes about why and how artificial intelligence is deciding the war in Ukraine. How artificial intelligence is helping the Ukrainians win a war against the second largest military power on Earth. It's not a war really between Ukraine and Russia. It's a war between you, Russia and United States technology because the decisive factors in this war have been U.S. technology. And I'll be showing you some of the instruments and uh, technologies of from AI and how they work. And uh, this is my clicker. No. Could I have a clicker, please? Where's my phone? Okay. My book, unfortunately, it's a bestseller, but unfortunately it's written in German. So how many people here speak or read German? Okay, one. The rest of you will have to get the text from my other edition. That's in Chinese. Probably not much help. But on my website, jtuck.com, there's a, a lot of information. There are a lot of speeches in English and in German. And uh, I would like to start my talk with a piece of Hollywood so you have a little bit of entertainment, okay? the USS aircraft carrier. I was on the USS Truman aircraft carrier during the Gulf War in wartime and I made a very intimate acquaintance with the kind of technology they had and the man you saw in the movie there is uh, Tom Cruise, a big Hollywood star. The movie's called Top Gun. It's Hollywood's conception of the best pilot. 
But I have bad news for you because you are all human beings just like Tom Cruise is. And human beings are no longer the top guns in the air. The top guns, for example, here, this is an F-16, the United States fighter jet. If you look in the uh, cockpit of the F-16, you don't see Tom Cruise or any other pilot. What you see inside the cockpit is a robot. Why? Because robots are the best pilots we have now. They can fly farther and faster and better than, than we humans can. We're out of flesh and blood. We breathe air. We need ejection seats to get us out. We need years and years of training before we can get up there in the air and in the deep blue and fly. But a robot, it doesn't need any of that. His education is basically an upload and it takes just a couple of seconds. Come on now. Okay, so this is what human pilots need up, up in the air. They need the oxygen to breathe, and they need space to sit, and they need cabin pressure so they don't explode. They need rest and recreation. They need flight time, lots and lots of expensive flight time, an ejection seat if there's a problem. They need training. And hopefully on the day that they're off to work, um, they didn't have a fight with their wife because we're also subject to emotional things. But a robot, this is the same pilot seat, the same cockpit. And the machine doesn't need any of that stuff. Which means, number one, you can go to war without risking human life of your pilots. But number two... You can do a lot of things that you can't do with a human being. If you put a human being in the pilot of a modern jet, I know many people who build and design modern jets in California and also in Germany. They can do amazing things with the design. They can fly at close to the speed of sound a left turn. They can do that so fast that if you're a human being and you're sitting in the cockpit of that plane, after that turn, there is not very much left of you. You're gone because humans aren't built for that. And we'll come back to this problem of designing weapons that human beings can't, can't survive because they kill them. Now, when I was a cub reporter, young guy getting started, I made lots of these charts for the TV station where I worked. And we always counted up the uh, weapons of the Warsaw Pact and the weapons of NATO. And we counted all of the, the tanks and the airplanes. And we figured out who's in a better strategic position to win the war. And the Warsaw Pact was way, way uh, above NATO. In modern warfare today, these charts don't mean anything, as we've seen in the Ukraine. Putin went across the border from Russia into the Ukraine with 10,000s of, of modern tanks. And he figured he was going to be in Kiev within 24 hours. And he still hasn't gotten there, and he never will. His problem was he depended, he depended on these old-fashioned, old-time charts, which don't mean very much. You take an, a modern American weapon called the Javelin. It's a, uh, a tank attack weapon. It's a rocket weapon. Now, the tanks of the Russians, they have very thick armor on the sides. Steel, steel, very thick, very strong. And they also have an exploding counter on her. So if a rocket hits the side of a tank, um, both explode. They neutralize the explosion. The tank survives. It's a tank defense strategy. The trouble is... The trouble is the modern javelin record uh, rocket, it doesn't attack from the side. It flies by itself. It decides where it's, it's called fire and forget. You shoot it and then you don't have to worry about it. It finds the target, even if the target moves. And then in the la very last minute before it hits the tank, it goes straight up in the air. Exactly. You know the javelin. This gentleman just made the right hand movement. Do it again. Yeah, it goes up, and, you know, physics, it goes up. What goes up go comes down, which means it hits the tank on the top. And on the top of a tank, there is almost 
no armor, almost none. So it goes right inside, and it kills the people. And I've talked to several people who've been in combat with javelins. They say, one javelin, one tank. Second javelin, second tank. It's just pop, pop, pop. It's very, very easy to kill the tanks. Weapons have gotten smart, and I would like to give you a very quick history of smart weapons. I was in the Gulf War. That was the uh, airport in Kuwait back in the Gulf War. And the weapon of choice back in those days was the cruise missile. That was hot stuff. Um, a cruise missile, you could program it to fly over 250 miles across the territory. It did what they call territory hugging. It would go up, up over the hills and down into the valleys. And you could program it to hit a high-rise building in the sixth story in that window. And it would fly in there and explode. Now, that was hot stuff back then, but the second time I was in the Gulf War on the aircraft carrier, they had changed the weapon of choice, and they had started using what they call fall bombs. These are the opposite of smart bombs. These are stupid bombs. All they are is an explosive charge wrapped in steel. You drop it from the airplane, it falls down and explodes. They can help it a little bit. Boeing made these little wings which would electronically guide the, guide, guide the thing in. But the advantage was a cruise missile costs $2.6 million. One. A fall bomb costs $62,000. Basically nothing. They're much more attractive. But we've moved on from there. Today the weapon of choice is the, uh, the drone. This was taken at a secret drone base. Um, that's a killer predator drone in the picture. No pilot, no danger of human life. Great precision. They fire the Hellfire rockets from under the wings. They can hit a, an individual car, a truck, a building, or a moving target with no problem. And um, there used to be some problems with what they call in the military language collateral damage military technology. What they mean is people, innocent people getting killed with, with an attack. And President uh, Obama was concerned. He wanted to reduce the people killed in these explosions. So he developed a new, uh, a new kind of bomb. So which instead of having an explosive charge, they put machetes on it, knives. And he would fire this rocket in like to hit a car, and it would go chop, chop, chop. This is what is left of a car when what the, the so-called Nina thing is hit. No explosion. It just goes in and, and chops it up. Modern technology used with artificial intelligence. That was an ISIS leader who got killed in, in that one. So the technology keeps moving ahead and, and changing and getting more effective. And when we visited the secret uh, Air Force Base, they were having fist fights. The pilots were. Because you had two kinds of pilots. You had the old-fashioned Top Gun kind of pilot. He trained for years. He flew up in the deep blue. He flew dogfights and, and all that stuff. And he trained for years. And then <laughs> you had the new generation of Top Guns. Play, uh, PlayStation kids. They got recruited off the, the, the bed in their, in their children, in the boys' room. And they didn't know how to fly an airplane. They had never in their entire lives been in a fighter jet. They knew nothing about it. But they were really good with a joystick. They, you know, their parents hated them because they were always flying these joysticks around. But the Air Force loved it because they knew how to fly these planes. And these kids when they joined the Air Force, they were getting wings. These are the pilots' wings, a, a big honor in the Air Force to be a pilot and fly these things and have wings. Um, so we're talking about different generations. Now I'm telling you about a secret weapon system. These are little tiny bugs. They're called micro weapons. They are thrown out from, uh, from cruise missiles, hundreds of them. And then they fly down to their little old programs. They fly in swarms. 
Now, you're IT people, you know to fly in a swarm, you need artificial intelligence. They have to talk to each other so they don't crash. So they fly in and, and they can fly into a tank's gears and, and break the motor. Or they can do what this little bugger does, they fly up into a high-rise building where there's a sniper who's killing your troops. And you sneak up behind the sniper like this, and then you do this. And it's very effective. Now this little film here, this was not made in Hollywood. It was not made by Marvel or Spielberg. The film you just saw is an official United States Air Force film. It is not normally re released. But I'm a journalist, and I managed to get my hands on it. And in fact, I found out now that these micro weapons are in combat now. I couldn't get a confirmation whether they're fighting in the, uh, against the Ukraines. But this should just give you a little, a little bit of a, a look at the kind of modern weapons that you're using. And the Russians, very simply, don't have answers to this kind of technology. In fact, they made a mistake. When they were entered into Ukraine, they all stayed on the street because they had to stay on the street because everything else was mud. They decided to attack Ukraine in the, in the rainy season, so they all were all lined up like this, which made it very easy for the guys with the javelins to just pop off one after another. They couldn't defend themselves. They were just getting them all killed. This was a big problem, especially for the tank drivers, because they noticed they were getting killed, and they noticed that the rockets were coming. Do it again, please. The rockets were coming, exactly, coming from up at the, crashing into them. So one of the things they did was like a do-it-yourself. These are javelins. And this is what the street looks like after the attack. They, they, they put little cages on top of the... This is these are the drivers, the soldiers, the simple soldiers. They welded together these ch cages. That doesn't help against a javelin exploding high-tech missile. It just doesn't. So they decided, we're going to give them an order. I've forgotten the Russian word. I knew it. It means split. And when they said split, all those tanks were supposed to get off the street and go hide in the woods. So the Ukrainians couldn't find them and sh couldn't shoot at them with their javelins. So they did that, and they did the split, and they were hoping that the Ukrainians wouldn't find them. So now we're going to talk about artificial intelligence in surveillance and looking at and finding weapon systems. This is also formerly a top secret military film. This system is called Argus. You put it in a drone, this image was taken and it looks down over the city, the entire city. We had them in Hamburg flying over us uh, when uh, Donald Trump, Trump was there the for G20. Computer has recognized the and they recognize Unlike the individual people and in individual field of view, cars. Argus this is the top secret system. From each of its and they can watch over a city. They can watch 50,000 people simultaneously, in real time. So if you have two drones, you can watch 100,000 people and keep control on them, and then you tell the Ukrainians, this is where the tanks are, and they went in in one. The information is almost as important as the weaponry, and you may have heard about this ship, it's the Moskva. It was the flagship of the Russian Navy in the Black Sea the flagship, the best equipped, the best technology they had. Ukrainians sank it <coughs> because they had another kind of drone that they used. All drones don't fly in the air. You can have them on the ground as a tank, unmanned, or you can also have them on the ocean as an unmanned boat. And uh, the Americans have, have drones. And where are they? No, wait a minute. Okay, I don't have the picture of the drones. Um, they are, uh, are very, very fast, and they have the same problem that they do 
with the airplanes. They can build a drone on the ocean that travels at a speed of 60 knots and can speed up to 80 knots. If you're f not familiar with speeds on boats, that is really fast. And they can change course really fast. They can change course so fast that if a human being is in that drone, he's going to die. And they use that to, to kill the mosque. So that just gives you a little introduction about this. I, uh, I always have the problem because I have a very schizophrenic opinion of artificial intelligence. I hate it because it's used in a lot of military uh, technologies to hurt, hurt people. That's what, what it does. But it is also a very good technology in medicine. It's saving millions of lives around the world today, right now. And I had a second talk planned. It was supposed to come after this. This was like the bad cop talk. And then I had one about the good cop. But they changed the scheduling, and I did that this morning. So I'm afraid you missed it. But if you look at the websites uh, I have, you will see how around the world, at great speed and with great confidence, artificial intelligence is saving human life. And I think there are a lot of companies here in Jordan who are working very, very intensively on this, uh, this technology. And they're out here in, in the rooms in front of you. So thank you very much. My time is up. <laughs>